homebrewed vapes. Today we're going to be talking about the Freemag Star sub ohm tank. I'm going to show you guys how she vapes, the machine quality, some of the specs on it, and also how to rebuild the factory coil heads. Uh, they come in 0.25 ohm and 0.5 ohm. And I will tell you this, as far as I know of right now, of all the tanks that I've used, this one, kick ass, top of the heap. The only thing that I can think of that would possibly compare to this thing would be the new Aspire Atlantis version 2, um, which I will be doing a review on as well. But for now, this is my tank of choice. I love what you can do with this thing. Now, as far as machine quality and build quality, that's a totally different um, deal, which we are going to go over. I do have quite a few cons for this tank as far as the build quality um, and machining goes. But we'll get down and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. So let's get down, see what it's all about. And here is the box that it comes in. It does have a plastic case that comes in, but we're not going to get into that. Open her up at the bottom and here's what we have. We have an extra Pyrex tank and an extra coil head that comes with. I have already used both. The Pyrex tank I broke <laughs> about two days after I got it, <clears throat> but the uh, coil heads, it comes with a 0.25 ohm and a 0.5 ohm coil head. The one thing it does not come with, like with all of them that I've seen so far, no warnings. No, hey, you need to use safe batteries with this. This is the operating range. This is the kind of batteries that you should be looking for. Um, any safety warnings, any, you know, use this on this type of device warning, anything. Guys, Star, Freemax, if you're watching this, you guys need to start putting some labels on here. I understand people are trying to make a buck, but at the cost of somebody's safety, a uh, beginning vapor who's just getting into this, they need to know what they're getting into. Just my two cents, but of course, it's been said. So, directions on how to use it. <clears throat> It says the first dual vertical coil technology in the world. Now, by dual vertical coil technology, what they mean is it is a parallel coil. That is all it is, is a parallel coil, 24 gauge with some non-resistance wire on it, which we're going to dive down. I'm going to show you guys the coil heads and um, how to rebuild it. Because uh, as far as I know, right now, there is not an RBA section for this tank. There is talks that they are going to come out with one. When that is, I have no clue. But for now, this is what we got to deal with. Now, big range of, of loading power, they say 20 to 100 watts. Now, what they don't tell you is that's 20 to 100 watts on a juice that is not a max VG juice. An 80-20, probably not. Um, 90, you know, a 90-10, uh, max VG, no. It's not, the wicking just can't keep up with it. Now, if you got a 60-40 VG PG, even a 70-30 is, is pretty decent on there. Um, and that is as far as I would go with it. Uh, anything higher than that, and the wicking just has problems keeping up with it. So let me show you the tank here. <clears throat> you have two Cyclops slots, and it is adjustable, and I love the clickiness of this. Let me use... There we go. You can go all the way closed with it, and if you want to do a mouth to lung, you can mouth along even though it is somewhat airy even at the smallest opening <clears throat> and then on the opposite side here you have this little lock or a little stop I should say keeps you from going all the way which I haven't figured out because from what I can see there's a little bit more room you can go a little bit more open but that's as far as she goes then you have your five milliliter tank capacity which with any tank so far that I've seen and I know there's actually some new ones coming out that you can fill from the top now um, but with this one here, still have to fill from the bottom. So, here's where we're going to get into the machine quality. I don't know if I'm going to try to let you hear this. Very gritty. And it is clean. I mean, I took this thing apart. I cleaned it. I've tried oiling the thread a little bit. And it still has that kind of grittiness. And whenever you're putting it back together, you know, after you fill it, that's where, I mean, it's just, it takes a minute. So, of course, with this one, fill it through the top. Go to the side on both sides. And this here is my dropper bottle. 
which has a fat head on it. And even with the fat head, it is still very easy to fill. Let's take it right up to the line there. And then and stick her on in. But here's where you have the problems. Trying to get the threads lined up. Even if I took it off the box, I still have this problem. There you go. Now, the issue that I had when I first got this thing, the coil head itself, and every coil I've put in here so far has been like this. So I don't know if it's just one that I got, it's just that way, or what, but what happens is the coil head will loosen up on you when you take it apart. See that? And the other thing is, if I tighten that coil head down, it does fire on this one, but on some of them, if you tighten them down, it says check atomizer, where you actually have to loosen it just a hair in order to get it to fire. I even had it to where I couldn't screw the tank on completely. I had to leave it just a little loose to get it to fire. And that was with the stock coils. Now that is, like I said, I don't know if that's an issue I'm just having or if it's just a factory defect. <clears throat> Something else I've noticed is this here, the bottom portion, is actually pressed on to this base. This base right here, this is a press fit between the ring and the uh, base section. Uh, and what had happened, I found out, was it kept. I kept looking at it, and I'm like, this thing is not straight. It was actually cockeyed. Well, I took the tank off, and I started uh, fiddling with it, and I got it to snap down in place. Well, then I actually I dropped this thing, and it wasn't a very hard drop, and this whole deal just popped off. Luckily, it didn't break the tank the second time. That was my bad. But uh, the, the base actually snapped apart. And I had to press fit it back on there again. Um, so as far as build quality and machine quality, wasn't too impressed with it. I love the looks of it. I love the way it vapes. It is a great vape. Um, but as far as the build quality, I just wasn't too impressed. And here is the other thing. You get this 510 drip tip, wideboard drip tip. Uh, and as far as the specs on the inside diameters, I do not have that. It comes with a double O-ring right here that you can use. Um, but even on, I mean, ever since I got this thing, here, let me zoom, or get a little clear here. Even when I got this thing, the tight, or the fit, isn't very tight. It's very loose. So tolerances, like I said, are an issue with this tank. Or it's just the one I got. Let me know if you guys have had any problems, anybody who has this tank. But that's what I got so far. So now we're going to get into building the coil heads. Now here's the coil head that it comes with. Now um, from what I've been told and some of the research I've done, the Aspire Atlantis coil heads do work in this. The only difference is your air holes on this one, you have four of them on the base pin. Now whether you could take that base pin out and use it in one of the Aspire Atlantis coils is something I have not tried yet. Um, but basically, it's any just like any of the bottom coil style coils. You got this pin. Carefully nudge it out. There we go. Take your insulator out, being careful not to rip it. And then there's your coil head. And all it is is straight organic cotton with a vertical parallel coil. So what we're going to do is we're going to push this out. And you're going to notice that <laughs> yeah this one was ready to be changed but like I said it's just a vertical coil 
parallel with organic cotton and the wrappings actually there's a I didn't get a chance to show you this one sorry about that but there is a outside wrapping that goes down inside this little channel on the two sides <clears throat> when you're rebuilding this if you can save that wrapping save it because it actually goes all the way around and stops at all four of these holes it kind of helps out as far as your wicking goes um, otherwise you're just gonna have to pack it a little bit different uh, whenever you go to put your cotton in so try to save that if you can if not no big deal it'll still work you just have to make sure it's nice and tight because this thing does over wick um, quite a bit if you don't get it right and this is the 0.25 ohm coil head as you can see there 20 to 100 watts and here's what we're gonna do we're gonna use some 24 gauge get a nice length of this because we are gonna make a parallel coil but it's not going to be like a uh, micro coil where it's going to be tight, you know, everything pressed together after you heat it up and all that. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be a standard wrap coil, but a parallel. So let me back out here if I can. Get my drill. And the only reason I'm using the drill is to uh, straighten out the coil or the um, cantal. It just makes it a little easier. So we're going to use this in since it's got a little fold on it already. Because I want the spacing on this to be dead on. You know, I, I, I want the two pieces to stay tight together. Okay. And I've showed you guys this before, but let's take your pliers. Grab the end of it nice and tight just give her a twist and it doesn't matter what direction you go in that's it straighten piece of canthal so now we're going to cut our end off where I put the loop and we're just going to roughly judge the middle of this instead of folding it over on itself We're going to take our two pieces of canthal right up on it there and we'll get back down here and we'll wrap this sucker. Now this is what we're going to be using. Um, let me get focused in here if I can. I'm not going to be using the shank of the screwdriver. What I'm actually going to be using is the shaft, the handle part. Now, measuring it, it's roughly about 5 30 seconds uh, to 3 16 on this handle here. And this is where you're going to get basically your airflow. So you want to make sure and use something like that. Now, it's going to be a little tougher to build on this because you don't have that shoulder to put it on. I mean, I could put it on here, but it's kind of wobbly. So I just do it right here in the center leave enough length because you have to make it down to the bottom of the coil for your positive leads and we're just going to do a six wrap or actually we'll do a five wrap with 24 gauge because I want to try to get it about 0 0.25 0 0.3 ohms and it is kind of tough to get the first one so we're going to hold it tight and like I said this is going to be a standard wrap coil so you're not going to touch them together you're going to leave a space Two, three, and just try to space them out evenly. Four, and five. Come on around with it. And that's what you're looking at. And we're just going to push it together a little bit, and it'll space itself back out. There we go. So we have a standard wrap coil. Now what we're going to do here with the positive leg, we're going to hold it down nice and tight. And we're just going to bend it 90 degrees down. Just like that. Now this one here is also going to get bent 90 degrees down, but not yet. We're going to go ahead and wrap this thing in cotton first. 
so let's get our Japanese cotton and what you want to do with this is you want to cut it the same height basically as your coil so you're looking at roughly three-eighths of an inch give or take but we'll just eyeball, eyeball it cut her right about here And now here's where it's very important. You see how it's trying to space itself out because this basically is two coils, okay? You want to try to keep these bindings tight against each other. So once you got it in place, you got it held in place there. Take your cotton, wrap it around, and keep a nice firm hold on that coil. You don't want it to move. Bring it on around, keeping it nice and tight, and here's where you've got to play with it basically, because you have to be able to fit this in your coil head, of course. Oop. Now we're going to take our negative, our ground leads, and do the same thing, 90 degrees straight down. on the outside because basically what it's also going to do is it's going to be uh, grounding itself to the body of the coil also and once we got that we'll go ahead and cut off our excess on the cotton grab our coil head here and actually I need to Take the screwdriver out and put it in the other side. It'll make it a lot easier to install this thing. Take our leads. Feed it all down into the coil head. And here's where it gets fun. Just adjusting my positive leads here a little bit, trying to straighten them out a little bit more. All right, everything's nice and tight. Try it again. There we go. And then once you get to this point, you're just going to kind of twist it. Try to get your cotton to stay where it's going into the coil head. So like I said, we're just twisting it. <laughs> and then once you get to this point, this is where we're going to use this. Push it right down in there like that. Pop the screwdriver tip back out. And there we go. So now, like I said, we've got your positive and your negative leads, and you're going to notice there's these little notches here. Okay. So we're going to take the ground leads, pop it through that notch nice and tight, like so. And then we're going to take our insulator slide it over the positive lead through the middle and your ground lead goes on the outside of course and then carefully without ripping it pop your insulator back in the hole so there you go now what you want to try to do with these positive leads keeping them together there's like I said there's a notch on both sides so we're going to try to bend this over right near that notch now my cutters, I kind of screwed them up a little bit. As you see, the tip doesn't quite cut like it used to, and it doesn't want to line up. So I can't get in there anymore to cut them off nice and tight once the pin's in place, because that's normally what I've done is put the pin in and then cut them. 
So I'm going to cut these now while I've got a little room. You just have to be very careful not to pull the coils because you don't want to mess them up oh. <laughs> or drop it. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get nice and tight up to this rubber gasket. Okay, so there's what we got. So we're going to take our pin carefully and actually let me show you this real quick take some e-juice just a little bit on there try not to get it on your fingers because pushing this in is hard enough without them being all slippery so we're going to push the positive leads over here just kind of give it a spin because you don't want to tear this gasket so there we go we were a little shimmy take our little screwdriver and give her a twist in there we go popped into place and then I gotta trim these off a little bit more So let's get this installed. We'll see what she uh, reads at and see what she vapes at. Almost forgot to tell you guys, of course, prime your coils. Put a healthy dose right down the center on your sides. Soak it up. Mm, point three ohms. Right, let's put her in the tank. See how it vapes. Check atomizer. See what I'm talking about? Look at that. Changed it to 0.4 ohms. I had to loosen the tank off, so. Let's back this off a little bit. Clean up my fingers. This over here. That was the stock coil, by the way, that I had there. Wipe this guy off. Now let's see what we get. There we go. Back down to 0.3 ohms. See how she vapes. So it turned out to be 0.3. I'm gonna say probably a little higher. It's higher than I wanted it to be. So. I probably could have done a four rep or I might even try to use 22 gauge and do like a six, maybe a seven rep. A little bit of spit back in there. That's going to be from the wicking, of course. And that's at 60 watts, 4.8 volts, 0.3. I would put in my ohm reader, but for some reason my ohm reader does not like to read these coils. It'll zero out and just won't show anything. Um, and if I fidget with it, I hate to fidget because I don't know what my true reading is, so I don't even bother with that. I just throw it on here. That's giving me just as good, you know, good enough information for me right now.
Now the air flows a little tighter, and like I said, that's all going to have to do with my wicking on it. So, is it going to be exactly like the stock coil? You can get it that way. And this was just my, you know, first attempt on this one, on this new coil head. So, um, I've got another one that I did that uh, I've been vaping on here and there just to kind of see how it's going to do, how long it's going to last and stuff like that. But, um, I've got one stock coil head left, which... I think it's this yeah this one here Let's see if I can get you guys to see that there but it is an organic coil head I don't want to tear this one apart because it's my last one it's my last one so uh, I'm gonna leave that one be but for now I actually vaping on this one here I got it wide open It's a tight long hit. Um, if I had to compare it to something, I would say if you have the Delta 2, it's just a tad tighter than a Delta 2. Flavor's great. The flavor's awesome, actually, on this. I like the flavor a lot, and it's a warm vape. Um, but yeah, you're, you just don't have the airflow. So that's something I'm going to have to change on that is just go in and mess around with the wicking, loosen it up just a little bit. Because I noticed on the first couple ones that I did, I made it too loose you know, to get it to fit down inside the coil. And what happened was it was over wicking. So I was getting a lot of spit back on the first couple that I, I tried on this thing. So making it a little tighter, it doesn't over wick. I'm not getting spit back on it. The first one I took off here was from juicing it up. I just had juice in the coil. So ever since then, it's not, it doesn't seem to be spitting back on me. So yeah, it's not spitting back. It's just a tighter draw. So that's something I got to mess with. But this is just to show you guys that it can be done, how to do it. And then as far as the wicking goes, that's something that you just have to practice with um, to get, get it to where you like to vape. So uh, as far as the RBA section, like I said, they're talking about making one. I've read that uh, they do have it in the works, making a rebuildable section for this tank. Um, I've been told you can use the Aspire Atlantis RBA uh, from the version 1 to use on this tank. I have not tried that out yet because I can't find one. I um, honestly can't find it anywhere. I have went online, you know, tried finding it, used every search to in the wrong places or it doesn't exist or it does exist and somebody out there has it. And if you do have it or you know where to find it, please comment in the section below because I'd like to find this thing. I want to try it out uh, until they come out with their own RBA section. Uh, it would make it a lot easier for one, but for two, it's just, I like messing with things. So, uh, as far as that goes, that's all I got to say on that. Now, I want to get to some shout outs. Raina Treadwell, Jeff Sofer, Steam Cloud, Big Natty, Vaping Heathen, Addy. Guys, uh, these are all people from the Vaporium.net or Vaporium.net. Uh, I'm going to leave a link in the section below. Check this place out, guys. If you are looking for a social place to go, and learn about vaping and just hang out with other vapors. I guarantee you this is the next Facebook for vapors. Um, very simple to use. Subcategories like off the wall topics, you know, kind of a buy sell trade place, um, juice reviews, tutorials, um, product reviews, anything that you want to know about vaping, I'm telling you this is the place to go. Uh, everybody there is very active every day on a daily basis and there is a lot of information on there for beginning vapors all the way up to experienced vapors so if you're looking for a place that you can go hang out and drama free um, this is the place to go guys Raina thank you so 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 much for making a place like this uh, it takes a lot for a person to do this for other people that she doesn't even know and I do thank you very much from the bottom of my heart and Jeff thank you so much for helping her get this thing off the ground officially started out May 1st even though it's been going for about a month now and I will tell you that I enjoy going to this place I love listening to what everybody has to say there and just to see what everybody is up to and uh, steam so glad you're feeling better glad you're back on there we missed you on there uh, and as far as shout outs go those are my shout outs for today Mike Vapes check him out on YouTube uh, he's got a lot of great reviews a lot of great products he's getting in now uh, Mike, congratulations, man. I'm glad to see everything's working out for you. Love watching your videos. 
Uh, also check out Brian at the Vapor Chronicles, <clears throat> and then also Butt Kickers. Those guys, uh, great trio, uh, great information they got on their channels, and then their show is just kick ass. So check them out on YouTube. Also, uh, as far as everything, I think that's all I got for you today, guys. So if there's anything you're wanting to see, comment below. Let me know. I'll try to get to it. Any questions whatsoever, let me know. Also, guys, thank you so much for watching. To all my subscribers, thanks for subscribe subscribing. Uh, really love doing this for you guys. I'm sorry. I've been kind of absent for the last few weeks. It's been pretty busy for me, uh, but I am definitely trying to get back on the ball. And as far as equipment goes, like I said, uh, working on getting some new equipment, but just not in the budget right now. So it will get better, but for the time being, this is what we got. So guys, thanks for watching again. And until next time, I'll catch you later.